Every so often here on Weather World, we like to introduce you to some of the new faculty members in the department, and tonight is one of those nights. Dr. Greg Jenkins is a professor in the department and also director of the Alliance for Education, Science, Engineering, and Development in Africa, which is part of Penn State's Office of Global Programs. Thanks for stopping by, Greg. It's good to see you. Good to see you, John. Now, someone who visits your website might kind of get the idea that you have three distinct research areas, mm -hmm. atmospheric chemistry, mm -hmm. climate, and tropical meteorology. But there really is a lot of overlap yeah. among those. So why don't we start by sort of describing what it is you do? Um, well, that's a very interesting <laughs> question. Um, those three factors are, they play a big role in everything that I do. So recently I have been focused on um, tropical cyclones, Saharan dust, um, extreme weather in West Africa, and it's a combination of all of those things that come together. So it's, it's actually more driven towards the human side of science as compared to just taking data. But some of those factors actually do impact the United States, like hurricanes or Saharan dust. They right. can reach the U.S. Now, you've participated in some really interesting field projects, either uh, leading them or being a participant. Tell us about your favorite and, and what you learned from it. Well, I would say, yeah, there's been lots of work in the field, but the NASA African Monsoon Multidisciplinary Experiment in 2006 was my favorite, um, in part because we had a chance to look at multiple features from aircraft and ground, things like squall lines and how hurricanes get started. You know, we didn't know a whole lot about those things at the time, and we're still learning, but, you know, some of those topics like aerosols and whether they make hurricanes stronger or weaker are really key questions that we're still trying to answer today. The other part about that was the students because there was a chance to bring students from the U.S., students from Senegal. They got a chance to work with scientists from the U.S., from Europe, and from Senegal. And many of them are now professors. So it was really cool. Yeah, that's what it's all about, really, when you have an opportunity to do some research in the field, if you can get some students, and not just graduate yep. students, yep. but undergraduates involved. Yep. Well, what's the most exciting research project that you're working on right now? Okay, so as we speak, we have instruments in the field and what we're trying to do is bring together air quality and respiratory health in West Africa. Um, we, we're pretty sure that the Saharan dust layers that come into large cities in West Africa are responsible for diseases like meningitis and might be spurning tuberculosis, for example, to grow at a much faster rate than, you know, it's a high burden in many of these countries. So really trying to understand what's happening at the ground which we can't do from satellite at this point is what we're after. So it's really kind of the intersection between weather and climate and health. Yes. Uh, when you and I first met, which was about 20 years ago, I remember distinctly your research interests were a little different. I was fascinated by one of the papers you wrote about something called the Snowball Earth yeah. Hypothesis, which seems a long way from what you're doing now, but <laughs> yes. it's so fascinating. Tell, tell folks what that was. Well, throughout Earth's history, we find um, glaciers generally in high latitudes. But early in Earth's history, it seems like they were down in the tropics. The, the evidence does point to that. And that would suggest that, you know, the Earth was completely frozen. And the mechanism to make that happen would have been changes in carbon dioxide over time. But I also found another solution, which is why I walked away from it, <laughs> <laughs> which was that if you tilt the Earth beyond a certain point, let's say 54 degrees, you can modify the climate without uh, bringing or losing lots of CO2 to explain the early Earth's climate. Right. And it did work. And then, of course, beyond that, right after that work, I went to West Africa for Fulbright. And being on the ground there made me focus more on the human component, especially in regions where you know, people are vulnerable and underserved. Yeah, your point about the snowball Earth hypothesis, there are a number of factors that control climate on the planet. Carbon dioxide in the air is, is one of the big thermostats, but also there are subtle changes in the tilt over yep. very long time periods. Yep. Um, tell us about the alliance that you direct here at Penn State. What are, what are some of its goals and what's your vision of what it can accomplish? So again, there are major challenges in Africa related to food or water or poverty. 
And many of these problems can't be solved without bringing together interdisciplinary teams of scientists. And <clears throat> the, the alliance, what it does, or SEDA, what it does, is it, it focuses on our faculty, the strength of our faculty and students who are doing research in Africa. It brings those together with African institutions and we go out and we try to bring uh, minority serving institutions in, into this also because in general, these kinds of problems require many diverse types of thinking, but of course, um, they also require that we go across dis disciplines. Right, I know you haven't been back uh, in the department very long, but what class do you most enjoy teaching or are you most looking forward to teaching? Well, I like teaching undergrads because of the energy. And I like doing research with the grad students because of the discovery side. Um, the undergrads just have tons of potential. And you can't always tell it at the beginning, but I think the main thing for me is to bring out the passion in the work, no matter what class it is, and also to bring the best out of them. So that's, that's what it's all about. Okay, Dr. Greg Jenkins, <laughs> welcome back to Penn State. Good to see <laughs> you, man. Thank you. And we'll be back in a moment with a recap of the short range forecast.